a month ago, I started this. Ilford's Delta 100 in 35 millimeter. It's time for another Adventures in Film. I put aside that video to work on a couple more videos. And my plan was to pick up where I left off. I only made a few exposures. But between then and now, I got this. <laughs> a different 35 millimeter camera. So I have this and this. So instead of continuing on with that initial video where I was testing out a roll of Elford's Delta 100, because I'd never shot it in 35 millimeter, I decided since I have another camera body now, why don't I just uh, shoot T-Max 100 in the new camera body then I can do a comparison. You might be thinking, why does he need another 35mm film camera? Well, it's, it's quite simple. My older camera, this is a Nikon N90. It works, it works fine on lenses with aperture rings. Unfortunately, most of my lenses are more modern G-type lenses that don't have the aperture ring. So what I did is I went out and found a N80, a newer model, and it has the dial in front and dial in back, which allows me to shoot manually controlling the aperture ring with the dial in the camera. It's, it's just that simple. So why am I shooting 35 millimeter? I do have a large format camera. It's 4x5 and I uh, don't plan on getting rid of that. I plan on keeping using that. If you've seen any of my videos over the last year, we, uh, we had some struggles. But I don't see any reason to uh, get rid of that camera. I, I still enjoy using it. But what I really would like to do with 35mm is just be a little more playful, be a little more experimental. The cost of the film is just so much cheaper. When I, on my 4x5, when I'm spending three or four dollars per click you can't really you can't really uh, do a lot of photography for that this last roll T-Max 100 I just bought it was uh, seven dollars for 24 exposures it's gonna cost me a dollar to develop so I'm gonna have less than ten dollars into this roll of film that's uh, basically two or three frames of four by five sheet film <laughs> so that's one of the biggest reasons I'd like to just play a little bit with 35 millimeter film so now I need to get back to the task at hand. I need to find some compositions to shoot this uh, Delta 100 and T-Max 100 on. I've already made my first composition on this little creek. I'm just going to walk around this area in the section of woods and see if I can find something. I kind of like to find a variety of shots, get an idea of what, what I can expect from this film. This will probably be one of those things where I don't finish today. Hopefully it doesn't take me another month to, uh, to get it done. We'll have it done in a few days and then we'll uh, get it processed and uh, see what we got.
Well, I finished scanning and editing the uh, negatives. Did a quick edit. Didn't want to spend too much time on, time on them. What I did notice is my scanner's really bad. And that's another reason I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these uh, negatives. I, I spent about the same amount of time on each image for each roll. Nothing, didn't do anything fancy, just kind of made them presentable. Just something to get an idea what the characteristics of the film were and kind of compare the grain and stuff like that. This exercise really pointed out to me that I really need a better scanner <laughs> or a better way of scanning the negatives. So that's going to be my focus here in the future. And another point is, this is by no means a scientific comparison. There's just too many variables. There are two different cameras, the light's changing, and my results may be way different than somebody else's results based on the developer I use, how I expose the film. There's really no definitive answer when it comes to this kind of thing. I'm just doing this to kind of get a, a general idea of what I can expect from these films. And if somebody ever tells you, oh, so-and-so film does this, this is how it works, well, it maybe works that way on their, the way they shoot, the way they process the film. But somebody else can do, use the exact same film and come up with completely different results. So you gotta really take that with a grain of salt. The only way to find out if this film or a certain developer is gonna work for you is by shooting the film and processing it in that developer. One more thing, this new camera, my new camera, <laughs> well, about halfway through this roll, I realized that it wasn't quite latched correctly and it looked kind of odd to me. It did have a little bit of a light leak on one frame and what was happening was half the latch was broke and only the bottom part was catching. So I've got to send the camera back and get a refund. So I'm back to the old camera. I don't have two cameras anymore. So this will be the last film comparison for a while. So let's get back to the video. I've got to say, before doing this comparison, I had a lot of preconceived ideas on how these films would compare. I think a lot of that came from reading photography forums, and I just kind of got this general idea of how Delta 100 would compare to T-Max 100. What I expected from Delta 100 was a nice tonal range, but something that was grainier than T-Max 100. I do think the tonality of Delta 100 is a little bit different than T-Max 100. Not drastically. To me, it feels just a little punchier, maybe a little bit more contrast. They both scan very well. Where I thought I would see the biggest difference was in the grain. And in this comparison, I was really surprised at how well Delta 100 stood up against T-Max 100. In fact, some of the frames, I felt like Delta 100 might have had a slightly finer grain than the T-Max 100. That's something I really did not expect. I used a yellow filter on this image of this covered bridge. And it looks to me like the Delta 100 showed the effects of the yellow filter just a little bit more. I mean, we're talking slightly. And once again, there are a lot of variables that could play into that. But for this one image, it did look like the, the blues in the sky was slightly darker with the Delta 100. It really doesn't do me that good to analyze every exposure, every frame in this comparison because they're so similar. And I don't think you're gonna see that much difference on YouTube. You're gonna just have to trust my eyes when I say I see a slight difference. Although this is pretty anticlimactic, this comparison has helped me decide what film I'm gonna be using. And I'm happy to say I would use either one of these films. A lot of it will be just what's available to me, what's the most affordable. It feels good to know that no matter which one I pick, I'm gonna be able to use it and get excellent results from it. If a picture doesn't turn out, it's not gonna be because of the film. I could scroll through and point out different aspects of these images, but there's really nothing in them that I couldn't change. <laughs> it's just a very workable film. It's very manageable. When I scan a negative, I don't expect to get the final image in the scan. I expect to get a working file. It's kind of like a raw image. I want to make sure it's just it has enough detail in the highlights and in the shadows. And then I, when I, once I get it into my editor, I make the fine adjustments. So often photographers or, or people want you to pick a side. It's always got to be a side. Canon versus Nikon <laughs> or, you know, PC versus Mac. 
well, Delta 100 versus T-Max 100, it's, it's kind of a draw, you know? It, uh, just whatever you like. A lot of it just depends on your shooting style and how you develop your film. So with that being said, until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.